So here we are on Friday morning, and to cheer us all up, we're going to go and have a word with Pat McHart. Pat, are you well this morning? morning? Jude. Fine Friday, uh, end of week morning. Oh, it's absolutely lovely here, Jude. The sun is shining. Uh, you know, you know, it's Baltic earlier on this week, but Jeepers, Jude, it's is beautiful it, is this it, morning. Is it mild this morning? Very mild, and it's, oh. the sun's shining. It's, seriously, it's, uh, yeah, the, the trees aren't even moving. Yeah, I know that. By the way, our, our two listeners will know that the trees are around my house. <laughs> well, I will say I always look out at the trees too. Look at the top of them to see are they are they um, moving yeah. around or thrashing yeah. about. Yeah. Anyway, that's good. Um, well, there's a, at least one of the topics we have to talk about in terms of the newspapers has been in every newspaper. It has been in the BBC, not just the BBC local uh, TV, but also BBC. Um, how shall we describe it? I was going to say national, but BBC Network TV, uh, that is from London. You mean mainland TV? Oh, sorry, yes, mainland TV. The mainland, the mainland, mainland yes, yeah, mainland. Uh, but, well, let's take, uh, the one I plucked out was, one was uh, headed, what is driving the violence, violent disorder in the North and the Aries Examiner? And the guy is a guy called David Young. And he mm. said, he talks about, Youths on both sides of a West Belfast peace line pelted petrol bombs and other missiles at each other through Wednesday, which is true. But I, I, my hackles rose a bit on that because yeah, all of the rioting was in uh, Carrick Fergus or Clough Fern or um, in, you know unionist areas, loyalist areas. Yeah. Then on Wednesday the. Um, brought the riots right up to the, the peace wall uh, and way. deliberately, you know, provoked, if you like, the people yeah. on the Springfield If you start road. throwing petrol bombs into a nationalist area, you yeah. know, you're going to get a reaction. Yeah. yeah. So he, the, I thought that was a terrible pity that happened. And I think it's a terrible pity that David Young and other people like him didn't make it clear that that was a new development. That uh, yeah. all, up until then, it was, in fact, the loyalist young people who were uh, rioting and now to make it out as being oh well it's, it's one side as bad as the other that yeah well, that, which is what i'd say yeah. Do, yeah. Do, do, like let's get this clear i was over in the waterside area of Derry there quite dark it's but 10 days ago and there there at that stage there have been four or five days of continuous uh disturbances well like they call them rather than raids you know uh, as the bbc describes it uh, uh well there was definitely raids back then so it's been going on for quite a while, and they were in, always in loyalist areas. And I don't know if you've been watching Karen Turish, the Northwest correspondent for the BBC. He's been covering it for quite a while, and so it's been going on. And it's not two sides. Uh, you know, these are almost exclusively loyalist areas. And to suggest now, by the way, I think it was unfortunate that youths from the nationalist area got involved, mm. but. Uh, you know, when petrol bombs and stones and stuff started, these people, the loyalists went down and say it's not uh, bigotry to state the obvious fact. They went down to the gates and started, you know, they rammed the gates as well. Yeah, so, yeah. so uh, with a car. So let's get this clear. And up until then, there was no involvement from the nationalist community. Yeah. I must say, David Young makes a point uh, in this article in the Irish Examiner. He, he, he notes that the, these guys, the unionist or loyalist rioters, are attacking the police. Uh, and he says it's only a short while ago that, uh, the, well, obviously unionism has lost confidence in the PSNI when they call for the head of yeah. the chief constable. But he points out, and he's right, that uh, not too long ago, it was the nationalist community who were very upset with the PSNI after the Ormo Road arrest of one of the guys who had been uh, shot at the time. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. it quotes um, Michelle O'Neill saying there was a crisis of confidence among the nationalists uh, in terms of the PSNI, but that she hadn't called on um, Simon Byrne to, re to resign. Uh, so I, I would take her point, like maybe, I don't know, would this be some kind of effort by the PSNI to balance things by showing they're going to be firm with the rioters, or have I got that? I, right? I don't know. Do you know I'd even nearly go down and sit in a, in a dark room after. I heard Jerry Kelly calling for support for the PSNA, and it's almost role reversal. Here, uh, here is uh, uh, the the Shinners calling for support for the police and for uh, criminality and rioting to stop. And I thought, good God, hey, you know, but f f what 30, 40 years ago, um, it would have been portrayed the other way. But uh, the, the reality is, look, unionism is in turmoil. It's as simple as that. 
And see this uh, Bobby story, you know, I am stating it one more time as a, a, I think a total pretext for what's going on. Bobby story, you know, people might have um, uh, broke the COVID rules. They have apologized for that. Fair enough, get, get that out of the way. Mm. There was an investigation by the uh, pros uh, public prosecution service who decided not to go. Now, in normal times, that would have been uh, that would have been it. There'd have been condemnation and sort of slapped on the wrists and whatever. But right here's the situation: uh, the protocol uh, as seen oh, by yeah. the Loyalist yeah. Unionist Committee as the first link in the chain being broken between the, the a constitutional position. Mm -hmm. Right, the Scottish uh, independence is another thing that's rattling the cage. They have been betrayed by the right wing uh, Boris Johnson government, and they're they're wondering what's next. And all those factors uh, are coming into play. And that's the other point. The DUP got played totally. They were gamed totally by Boris Johnson, who made them promises that there'd be no uh, uh, anything in the Irish Sea that and he would ensure it. And then the next thing, when he got through, and of course, the, the ultimate thing is the DUP, had they agreed to support Theresa May, would not have an Irish Sea border, but they went for to support Boris Johnson. And look what's, what's happened. All those things, if you put them all together into the pot and stir, that's what was the real problem. Bobby's story, if you know, is a sort of convenient sort of vehicle to, to protest. Uh, well, I'll come back to that in a minute because uh, there is some more mention about it in terms of the numbers. But uh, do you think that the um, unionism, broad unionism, including loyalism, believes that the de that the protocol will be changed as a result of this rioting. They do. I think they do. do but really it's not going to happen, Jude. It's not going to happen. No, no, of course they do. They, 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 you re read some of the graffiti on the wall, listen to uh, some of the commentators, and uh, Arlene Foster's basically sort of saying, unless we get our way, and this is renegotiated. But do you read any of the uh, people who are talking to people in Europe? talking to people in Westminster and talking to people in Dublin. It ain't going to happen. It but took four you, years to get this thing. Yeah, do you yeah, and subscribe to the notion that uh, the unionist politicians like Arlene and others wound them up uh, by saying about the danger of the protocol and the shameless display by the uh, people who attended Bobby Story's funeral. Uh, that this was to wind them up. And then that they, when they were unleashed, that they said, "Oh well, we really saw oh, it was terrible." We Absolutely, Should I think they, that they, anybody... they think that will work. They think that'll actually. Uh, yeah, it should, it's worked before. Do you, you know the uh, uh, this uh, unionism? And, and work uh, uh, unionism use. Uh, uh, finding this date, it worked. You know, unionism right. uses the threat of loyalist paramilitary to pressure to get their own way, mm -hmm. and they have used it throughout. And sure, you can see in some of the, like, uh, let's refer to our friend Stephen Collins and Irish Times again. Aye, aye, he, he, uh, uh, this sort of thing, uh, the Irish government would need to take unionist anger seriously. And it basically sort of says, right, let's back off again. So this sort of thing, all, you know, the minute uh, rattle a few sabres and Stephen, uh, Stephen and his hulk sort of say, oh, no, no, we can't do anything. It's almost as if uh, the unionist veto just threaten and we'll get our way. Now, oh, if, if, you're depend if you're dependent on the likes of Stephen Collins, for the nationalist community to get some sort of uh, recognition or, or parity of esteem, God help you. Do you think, is it also, you've said that you think that the idea is to break the protocol, to get that removed. Yeah. Uh, do you think they also have in mind the idea that the scenes of violence will make the people in the South think twice about going with a yeah. border pole? I would do it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, of course it's the same. This is a show of loyal strength. This is what could happen if if we get don't get our way or the protocol isn't uh, uh, rescinded. But the other side of the story, it's can you imagine what it's like in London and uh, uh, an English person watching this? These are the people who are loyal and they're attacking the uh, the police. They're attacking the state. They're condemning Boris Johnson. You know. I heard, by the way, uh, 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 okay, it might have been isolated, but there's a guy on Nolan's show, an English guy who said, look, would you, would you all clear off? And and he made no apologies for it. I'm sick and tired of listening to you. And, you know, he, he basically said, look, we're in a foreign country. There should be an air there. We shouldn't be there. It's immoral what we're doing. Oh, that's a dangerous thing to say. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I you've said that uh, the people in Britain uh, they see this rioting by unionists uh, or loyalists, and they're sort of disgusted by it. Do you not think that they think of all of, all sides here are a bunch of nutters, 
Yeah, uh, not absolutely. just the unionists. Would they not lump in with that one side yeah. as bad as the other? Yeah, my brother and I worked in uh, England for 40 years. And he said, you know, when you're walking down the street uh, and he spoke, and the minute you open your mouth, they just call you Paddy. And he said, they didn't discriminate whether you're from Belfast, Donegal or wherever, you were just Paddy. And they didn't care whether you're unionist, nationalist or in the between. Look, by the way, Jude, let's get someone clear. I understand uh, loyalism unions. I understand their fears and their concerns, you know, and and they're, uh, but hey, there is a way of dealing with this. And I keep making this point as well. Jude, so far, unless you know something that I don't, the constitutional position of Northern Ireland has not changed one iota. It will not change until the day that the, the majority vote for unity. So see all this sort of uh, rattling up the chains and sort of scaring everybody and so on. Look, if the protocol is tweaked to benefit Northern Ireland, both communities and the trade fl flows both ways, there are problems with uh, various things, you know, and you can see that. But that those are, uh, as somebody said the last day, it's only been there for about what at this stage four or five months, like, uh, and and, a, and they should have it sorted out. And well, there are difficulties. Everybody admits that. Yeah. But you'd uh, like try. Uh, there was a, as I think I mentioned to you last week, there was a group of uh, people from Manchester flew into Alley County Airport, uh, got off the plane, were turned right back and sent back to, uh, because they didn't have the right documents. Mm. This is the new reality of Brexit. Mm. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm not sure uh, that uh, they're there is they have a point, you know, with regard to the protocol. I, I yeah. think I honestly think the unionists have a point about the protocol. They say that because uh, the North will be in exact harmony and uh, essentially yeah. within the EU, taking the orders for, from the EU, uh, for, uh, that that will hasten the day of Irish unity. I think they're right. I think they're right. Uh, that's a reasonable interpretation because if you start treating the island of Ireland as one unit, one economic unit, yeah. it's, a, it's a much easier step from that to having a border poll and winning it. Yeah, but uh, you know, that, might, it might, might not. Hey, Jude, let's be real. I mean, I mean let's, let's I don't know, apologize or unapologetic one. But I, I also, uh, the reality, there's a growing number of people, and I have come across them, who describe themselves now as Northern Irish. Rather than British or rather than Irish, you yeah, know, yeah. and I'm sure you, and they're, and they're nice middle class Catholics, you know, yeah. yeah, you know, they all went to grammar school and got university degrees, you know, so like there's no guarantee there's going to be uh, Irish unity. I want Irish unity, so but I'm not, gonna, but I'm also a, real, a realist. Mm -hmm. So let, let, that's sort, it's overhyping this. Oh, I, let, let's you know scare everybody to death in the unionist community that hey, you're you're going to be railroaded into Dublin in the morning. I, uh, no, there, I, there, it's going to take at least five years, maybe ten years. Uh, At, and then there's no guarantee that. So I don't know why the politicians on the union side are doing this. By the way, I, I, no, finally, I do honestly believe that they're almost say, saying the word Northern Ireland is ungovernable. <laughs> I don't think they have to say it. So they're <laughs> try, but so they're pro they're proving the point that it's a failed entity. So in other words, it's uh, you know it's almost counterintuitive what they're doing. Yeah, it's, it, it always has been. Uh, in this sort of state of instability, uh, either yeah. overt or, you know, covert, mm -hmm. and it's overt over the last week. Incidentally, mm -hmm. just briefly, I said we'd come back to that thing about the Bobby Story funeral. That article by David Young talked about yeah. 2,000 people took to the streets of West Belfast when tight limits on public gatherings were in place. He's referring to the Bobby, uh, yeah. Bobby Story funeral. Uh, uh. And, and, and Nelson McCausland, in his article in the Belfast Telegraph, talks about Republicans who were reveling in their self-image as untouchables with ranks of men marching behind the Sinn Féin leadership at the funeral. Would, would that be right? I didn't think there was, I didn't I, see I, any I, ranks of marching men. Or I didn't see any marching men. I saw a cortege and as well as that. Uh, the, the, uh, this is the Bobby Story funeral is seriously overplayed. And go and watch them. I just don't take just the DUP's version or the union's version. You can see the people marching and they're social marching. They're they are cartridge. They're not marching. They're socially distanced. You can uh, see Jerry Adams well away from Michelle O'Neill and all the rest. Hmm. The bits they could control, they obeyed the, the rules. Where they had fit, started to fall down was the people lined along the road. By the way, Jude, I'm, 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 according to the figures I remember hearing, was something like 400. Where's this 2,000 come out of? I know. I, I think that's, that's what was the point I was going to make because that was a bit yeah. much. And there certainly wasn't marching that I saw. They, they were, no. was, uh, By the way, Jude, here's the other thing. You know, if you're a nationalist and you're sitting listening to this absolute rubbish, like, 
where, where, there was no when uh, the RHA inquiry was finished. The Nationals didn't sit down and sort of say, "Right, we're not accepting that," and and sort of let's bring let's call for the Judge Cotton to be censured for bringing out a report that they didn't agree with. Uh, you know, when the Rangers fans came out onto the street in the Shankill Road, they didn't call for the head of um, uh, Simon Byrne. And when the young fellow, the only person arrested in regard to the Sean Graham bookies, book they didn't, you know, they, they made a protest, but end of story. But when Bobby Story's funeral comes along, that's jump all over the place. Like uh, the two tier policing, the Nationals could make that claim far more strongly mm -hmm. historically than the Unionists ever could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think we'll leave this uh, now in a moment. But uh, yeah, I heard on the radio this morning that they said that there was a, a do several dozen social workers and I guess Sinn Féin uh, officials or members lined the road in front of these young rioters on the Springfield Road to prevent them engaging with the um, loyalist rioters on the other side. Yeah. That was last yeah. night. Yeah. Incidentally, one other thing, I gather that on Twitter. There's been a lot of um, exchange of tweets suggesting that tonight there would be an organized march of loyalists from South Belfast to West Belfast yeah. and protest what's happening. Now, that's kind of scary. Yeah. Uh, that, you, maybe that well, is, that's what they want to do. Yeah, want yeah, to scare people. Uh, but, you, uh, but here's the whole thing as well. You just brought it to mind. You know, some of these people are arrested are as young as 13. And they're they're adults standing behind them, cheering them on. Yeah. I, I I like I would ask, you know, see what is my kid? And I well, know that young rider got caught in the petrol bomb, and I'd say he's badly burned. Oh yeah, like, this is serious. This is not a bit of sort of a recreational rioting. Somebody's going to get hurt before this is all over. Uh, but you see, Pat, we're talking as elderly men. Well, I'm an elderly man. You're uh, I am too. Young yeah. blade, really. But yeah, yeah, don't yeah. forget, to, don't forget when you're that age. When you're 13, 14, you see yourself as indestructible and anything that's exciting, regardless of the rights or wrong of it, anything is exciting, especially if you've been locked down, is yeah. wonderful. And COVID, yeah. And, and, and Dr. I remember, Kongs, yeah, but hold on, Dr. Kongs, that's not the point I'm making. I'm make, The point I'm making is their parents or their senior adults are sitting there cheering them on. They, the, the adults and the loyalist community should be reaching for these young people and say, gone away home. But wasn't it true that that's what they were saying the time of the Battle of the Bogside? Unionists were saying that about uh, Catholic or nationalist parents. Why no, no, hold on. Should they, 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 hold on. The, the parents and the, the children and everyone was involved in that because they were under siege, you know, by police who with batons and uh, with uh, whatever. That was a community defending itself. Mm -hmm. This is one where they're sort of attacking it. Ah, good point. Big difference. Good, good point. I just, my final statement would be in this. I remember that uh, 1969, and I remember looking at the faces of some of the kids who'd been up all night, really uh, yeah. rioting or, you know, putting up barricades or whatever. And not just kids, but young men too. Um, their faces, they almost glowed. There was, a, there was an excitement written on their faces. It was, oh, yeah. I, I tell you what I thought of, it was like a Bible the transfiguration, you know, the <laughs> apostles went up to the mountain and came down. Yeah, and their come faces down. were- And their face were- That's true. It was, yeah, was, yeah. was a, a, a transformation, a, a, a level of excitement in their faces. And that's why yeah. I'm saying, uh, maybe it wasn't totally thought out then, and certainly I would say that yeah. things aren't totally well, I thought out I assume there's a place in I think it was known as Agro Corner. And they, they used to have recreational writing ah. after, after everybody got out of school about four o'clock yeah. and the soldiers showed up and they showed up and the whole thing's kicked off. Yeah, and I think yeah, both sides, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's well, you know, we're dismissing it as, as uh, well, we're not dismissing it, but no. uh, we're, a lot of people are pretty sanguine about it. But if we go by the media and we do tend to be led by the media, it's a big, big deal. Because it is, say, it is, it was yeah, headlines in England as well. Yeah, it's, a, it's the most serious rioting that's been in Belfast mm. for many years. Aye, and it has involved America as well. I heard Brendan. Yeah, Boyle yeah, yeah the, White House, the White House, I know, uh, I, I presume Don Trump didn't know where Belfast was, but Joe Biden's a wee bit more aware. Aye, aye that's right. Okay, let's move on uh, to another topic, which we touched on the last day. And this is an article in the Irish Times by a woman called Carolyn Lillington. And the heading of it is, Ireland will not fall over if the crutch of low corporate tax is kicked away. I must say, I yeah. thought of you when I, I saw that, Pat, because you said something similar 
a few days ago, and there was yeah. this question of, there's now a drive to have all corporation tax throughout, well, the world maybe, and it's yeah. being led by the US, uh, yeah. and not to have multinationals being able to, you know, get off the hook and get away with murder, so yeah. to speak. Uh, she argues in this that the um, um, US Treasury Secretary may be wanting to raise the tax rate for a global minimum tax rate of 21%, but yeah. that won't be a problem with Ireland, uh, and she yeah. gives reasons for it. You presumably would agree with that. Absolutely, Jim. I, I think I, I think the woman, the, uh, she, is she the Federal Reserve. Yeah, yeah, that's Janet, right. US Treasury Secretary that's her name. Janet Janet Yellen. Yellen, yeah, she she's a quite a. She was on. The, I think she was in the Clinton administration as well. She yeah. is saying that the multinationals, the American multinationals, should be taxed at twenty one percent on foreign profits of Ireland, something along those lines. And you see, in Ireland, we're, we we charge twelve and a half percent in the Republic on corporation tax. But here's the thing, Jude. I, 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 Ireland, they were during the during the Trump, they were going to pull out American uh, uh, companies during the recession. They were going to pull out American companies. It, it didn't happen. And Jude, with respect, I would hope. I think it's highly unlikely that it will happen. Jude, here's a couple of things that I'm going to throw at you. Right, there's a high skill uh, uh, factor in Ireland. There's a highly educated young population there's management expertise there's a background you know there's a culture we speak english we're inside the eu uh the americans particularly who are very heavily invested there's a sort of culture irish american thing that they have no problem with and there's sort of there's a sort of likes on both sides uh, you no know, and there's an endless supply dude we have the youngest population i think in europe mm. an endless supply of highly intelligent highly motivated workforce Plus, there's all this uh, the thing, dude. There's a, the, the other side, the more uh, culture thing. There's the music, there's the literature, there's a nice lifestyle for a lot of people to come here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, dude, uh, the final point I'll make here on this look, I grew up in Lottery County, and I've told you before, it was a monoculture society. It was quite Catholic and whatever. Uh, uh, somebody sort of exotic for us was a Protestant. You know, right. <laughs> we're, 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 <laughs> look at the other way. I was in Lottery County the last day, last Saturday. And I'm not kidding you, uh, walking down, or driving down the main street at a case drive, I would say 70% of the people walking on, on uh, that I saw walking were people of color. Mm. That's how much it's changed because a lot of these people are Indian and, and mm. they're working and there's three big uh, uh, high tech companies in Letter County. And a lot of their high skill staff are from India and this part of the subcontinent. I'm not quite sure. A any you know, resentment to those faces? Say again, sorry. Any, any, resen any resentment, any level not, of Not resentment. as far as I can say, no. And most of them are very friendly, nice people, yeah. are very civilized, and uh, I don't mean that in a way. No they're people that wouldn't be good enough They're very, for, very, the, the, the war they're warm and friendly. What? Well, if you're saying that 70% of the people, well, even, that, you might be exaggerating a wee bit, but an awful lot of... Uh, no, you know, no, I should explain. Oh, I mean, walking like someone might have cars, you know. Yeah, but usually when people like that come into a country, there's a nervousness if there's many of them. Uh, and uh, people will say they're changing the character of our. Uh, no, they're not 70% of the population, Jude. Let me make that clear. They're, they're just yeah. they're on the streets walking, you know. Uh, not at all, Jude. Okay, be, maybe me, at, at most, maybe five to ten percent of the population uh, of County. Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you think there's any race prejudice in Donegal? Jude, I, I'm working on the basis that there's always racism everywhere, but I, I haven't said that. I, there, there's no overt racism that I have seen. In fact, uh, people are very welcome. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, one of my opposite one of my kids, there's a Syrian family, and they're the yeah. loveliest people. Yeah. You know, they're genuinely nice. Uh, warm, friendly yeah. people. Yeah, I think you're right. Actually, Pat, I was, I was just sort of being the devil, devil's advocate there. Uh, I think by and large, certainly in, among nationalists in the north, uh, mm. they're, they're, and Republicans, there does tend to be a, a, a more welcoming attitude towards immigrants. Um, right. In the uh, loyalist slash unionist community, I'm not sure there's quite so much. Yeah. Um, we could go on about that in terms of uh, the, the way that uh, there is even uh, discrimination, or well, there has, was discrimination for 50 years, uh, and yeah. the way that, for example, whenever um, Catholics yeah. from West Belfast began to get into the middle classes yeah. with joining prof professions and moved into the, the leafy um, area of South Belfast, there yeah. was quite an exodus, quite yeah. an exodus of middle class 
unionist people out of where, uh, South Belfast towards, um, what was it, North Down. Uh, so even in terms of middle class, there is Aye. certainly was signs that they regarded um, nationalists, even middle class nationalists, totally Aye. peaceful and so on. They didn't hey, Jake, have can I next tell you door. Something? There goes the neighborhood. I, 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 one of the few times I got I noticed John Hume getting angry about something, there was a guy, uh, an academic, he wrote an article in the Irish Times about uh, Derry, where the, uh, the Unionists uh, are Protestant flight from the West Bank. Yeah. And Hume went, uh, you know, you know, he said, OK, he understood a, a, a certain parts of it, but he said there was one thing that was one factor that was totally complete. He says places like Colmore, which was the nice and the yes. Colmore Road, where a lot of the unions moved out, oh, really? not because of violence or troubles, right? Really. It's when middle class Catholics moved in. Isn't that interesting? That's and exactly that, what has happened in, in Belfast as well. Yeah, not I. If you went down to Colmore Point, it was almost exclusively back in the sixties, uh, Protestant and unionists, you know, the the sort of capital classes and all that. The people there moved out not because of troubles, not in the least. They had their boats and all that, but the vast majority of them moved over to the water side because. They started building houses down there and, you know, nice, you know, for the teachers and the, the whatever, the uh, senior serv civil service, whatever the hell, and, mm -hmm. you know, the young doctors and nurses, and they all moved in. And all the sort of landed gentry types, out they went, you know, <laughs> and dude, that had nothing, nothing to do with uh, the trouble. Yeah, that's, a, that's a bit depressing. And, but we sort of knew that. We sort of knew yeah. that. Let's hope that that's sort of something that's fading. Let's finally then come to a, an item that only sprang up this morning. And I don't think you were aware of it. I, I only was aware of it because my wife pointed out to, out to me that Arlene Foster is reported in the Belfast Telegraph online. She was asked about her career plans. And she said, I've always had a desire to go to Westminster. I've never hidden that fact because it is the mother of parliaments. Now, I, I interpret that as her having ambitions to become an MP, but it might well be, she said that she, she would certainly be very interested or interested in that after she'd finished with her present duties as first minister here. But, you know, I thought MP, first of all, and now I begin to think maybe she was thinking about the House of Lords because that's where all ex or failed, in the case of Nigel Dodds, failed unionist uh, politicians go whenever they, well, not I was going to say before when they die, when they, when they die a political <laughs> death, politically. They go to, yeah. political death, they go to the House of Lords. Would you think she's thinking about the House of Commons or the House of Lords? Well, but I guess who's she going to replace in uh, the House of Commons? And yeah. Jude, I, I like, I, straight up, Jude, I, 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 it's only a personal opinion. It's not based on any great fact. Yeah. I think her days of, uh, of leading the DUP are numbered. Like the DUP are in disarray. I, I think you can, they're, what is, they have eight or nine MPs. And every one of them have got a different voice. I know, and there uh, seems to be no party discipline. They can say and do what they want. Do you she think says on, she says one day she's not meeting Simon Byrne, uh, and, then, and then three days later she's meeting him. Go ahead. Sorry, do, you, do you think that she's? Uh, do you think this is part of this move against Arlene? That Arlene sees that her days are numbered and is busy, you, busy telling uh, what terms under which she's going to leave. Well, no, that term "dead woman walking" politically. <laughs> I, I, I think. I, I think. I think the DUP have bossed up. So you know so magnificently they have you know i only caught the tail end of it but there's a and i didn't even see who was uh, emily maitlis on newsnight one night saying to somebody in the dp are you people really serious blaming others for what you have done uh, you know you know and, and like she was incredulous you know that anybody would come out and blame anyone else and you, you know dude four five years right 2015 uh, me and you weren't talking then we should have been but we weren't <laughs> there was no mention of uh you know, nationalists being unhappy or any of that sort of stuff. Nationalists were going along sort of quite nicely. Things were settling down. Along came Brexit and the DUP backed Brexit despite the fact that 56% of people in the north of Ireland voted against it and they got their wish. You know, and the, what is the, you know, be careful what you wish for. It's a, it's a, there's a, a really a searing irony, uh, as you say, where they uh, got what they wanted because it applies to the UK. Yeah, exactly. Right? And then what was the thing that they were told that applies to the UK? Oh, the 56% uh, in the North voting against Brexit doesn't matter. This doesn't was matter. a UK-wide vote. Uh, 
So, yeah. <laughs> in one case, case, version, oh no, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> uh, that doesn't. We want our version. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, do you think really comes. should we be preparing to uh, put uh, money into a kitty for a farewell gift to Arlene then, and anytime soon? Yeah, uh, is she just uh, using that as another distraction? That's an, uh, well, it's another distraction, dude. But like, who, uh, who and under God wants a job? Like, will it be Nigel Dodds takes over or Edwin <laughs> Boots? So, you know, like, oh, well, no, Nigel uh, Dodds won't. He's already in in Unionist heaven in the House of Lords. I know, but as leader of the party, I'm talking about. Um, oh, he would be the leader of the party and just in the House of Lords. No, I don't. I wouldn't see that. Pat. Ah, but what, what's he stopping? Ah, uh, how many? How many sure, what, oh, hold on, hold on. Sure, Arlene isn't in the House of uh, uh, Lords. Uh, you know, she, like she's and not. She's not an MP. That's my I point. That's just, my point. Oh, she went to the House of Lords. She couldn't be the leader. Oh, of that, no, no, it's got nothing to do with it. She can still oh, be the uh, 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 no, Nigel no. Dodds could still be the leader and not be in the no, he's 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 not, his face hey, hasn't been his face has hardly been seen since he lost yeah. his seat and went to the House of Lords. The House yeah, of Lords no. is a place where they receive people who have died in spirit but who are still alive <laughs> in body. You understand? <laughs> they are dead hey, men when you see, and women. When you, when you see how many of them are fine. <laughs> when you see how many of them are fast asleep when, when the camera uh, pans around, you're dead, right? Okay, and with I mean, that tranquil thought, I think we'll maybe wind up this particular session. Yeah, yes. Except there's something wise you want to tell us before we leave. No, no, no. Just enjoy the weekend, Dr. Collins. Okay. Oh, listen, <laughs> we, we were to recommend one TV show for people today. Uh, Have you done your uh, homework? No. I, I, here, no. I've, no, no, yes, excuse me, don't jump the gun here. <laughs> uh, there's a program I never watched until quite recently. And I've got Vera, if you want a good two hours on a, a sort of an evening when there's very little else on, it's an old fashioned program, but it's brilliant. And I start I started watching it during the winter on a winter's night one because there was nothing else on. Where's it? It's on? usually it's usually uh, well I know on my end I get it from Virgin Three, I presume if you uh you should be able to get it on UTV or ITV, uh because uh, that's that's the mirror that's well, you can Google it. You Google, Google it, yeah. Google it, and then but they're really watch. great stories. It starts all programs start with a murder, uh, but it, you know obviously. But then it, it, it follows the investigation. But you learn about it's not the simple you no know, Sherlock Holmes. Oh, I deduce. Mm -hmm. It's about you learn about people's lives and what happens oh, and, and how they how they got to where they got. It's, it's mm -hmm. a really really intelligent program. Any and laughs? It's, and it's a good, huh? Any laughs? Oh, the great laugh. Oh, she, the, the character uh, Vera is superb. She wears the same old hat. She drinks whiskey. Her diet is usually fish and chips sitting in a van. She's a disaster. And, you know, but it's, it's real, it's realism because it's, she's not pretty, pretty. And, she, you know, and sometimes she can't even bend down to put on the plastic okay. when she goes to a crime scene. Great okay. stuff. Well, I, I, my, my vote, uh, my suggestion, quite a suggestion, again, I can't remember where it is. I think it's on Netflix, is a series called Call My Agent. It's a French yeah. series, actually. It's got subtitles, and that puts a lot of people off. Puts me off a bit uh, too. Of course, that's but... typical intellectual rubbish you're coming out with pounds. <laughs> what a pity it wasn't black and white as well. Uh, no, <laughs> it was. It was very. Um, it is really, really funny. I mean, there. Uh, it is just a howl, and yet it's very clever, and it shows you that kind of relationship between uh, important people in France uh, who are yeah. stars and the importance of the agent behind them and yeah. the rivalries that. Uh, uh, Go on. run riot in the agency yeah. itself so that's my yeah. vote call my agent and you're saying vera we will we'll ask oh, you wait, i'll, I'll leave you with this dr Holmes. okay there's one of the nicest books i've read in years and all, all said, is yeah. all said that uh, and it's written by a woman called uh where is it? Anne griffin and hey it's the best uh the first chapter is the best written thing i've ever seen out about grief grief it's absolutely uh, Entertain is not the right word. Moving, uh, but uplifting. Uh, is she in English or uh, no? She's uh, Irish. Irish. Irish I, yeah. I, I don't know where I came across it or how I ended up buying the book, mm -hmm. but it's absolutely superb. And on that note, Doctor Collins. Good. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Pat. It's been a delight, and it's been both a privilege and a pleasure to be talking to you. And, an and, and, and let me return the compliment. <laughs>